find in favor, baby, or trust in grace. Belief with evidence, all the mystery of faith. Everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we're the Yahoo Latour YouTube channel. And it is a Shabbat. And thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. That is Nicole's pick for music. It sounded like um, something back in the '70s, maybe. I, I don't know what it is. I brought it to you and asked you, and I told you it's going to be slow. And you said, Go for it's it. a slow one. We always have a problem with music because we don't do anything with the world music, and we don't do anything where the people will give us ads. So that when we, um, the people that are watching this in the future, they all get served with evil, vile ads. And so our music is a little different. So hopefully that was good for this morning. Hopefully it didn't get us a strike. How's everybody out there doing? How's everyone around this table? You guys good? Good. 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 Everyone happy, happy, happy? Yeah, everyone yeah. good? Okay. Um, let's begin with some prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this little ecclesia. We thank you for your beautiful day that we call the Shabbat. And Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for your word. Father, please enhance our ears. Allow us to see what you want us to see. 
Father, we thank you for the kingdom to come. We thank you for your son who is going to be our king. And we thank you for your beautiful, awesome ways. And we thank you for your Torah, which has enhanced our lives, which is a wonderful part of our world. And we can't thank you enough. We ask this all in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right, Miss Nicole, let's say hi to everybody in our little chat room. We have the Grand, Judith. Oh, Leo just Leo said, says hi, Leo too. says hi, Grand. <laughs> Carla. Um, Nazarene follower bear, which is Yosef. Yosef, yeah, I saw you in email. Much love, brother. Uh, Ali Empanadas is here. Hi, Ali. Zachary Z, Rhiannon, and Damon. Sligers and Damon, and how you doing, fam? Um, and I think that's it for the moment. That's it for the moment. That's all we need. Um, we thank you guys very, 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 very much for hanging with us. Mr. Caden, will you please give us the uh, Shema, por favor? Yep. Hero Yasharel, Yahua Eloheinu, Yahua is one. And you shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. Beautiful. All right, and I see Dragon in there. I see Bobby Z in there. Much love to both of you guys out there. Huge love. We really, really appreciate all of you guys. Um, Bobby Z, Chris from Bobby Z Channel, he is the guy that has been helping us actively. One of the only people that is actively helping us get these scriptures to where we are able to read them and get them out. So a huge shout out to Bobby Z's channel and Chris, much love to you. All right, guys, so let's get into this, and this is what we do every Shabbat, and which is try to stop the dogs from um, barking while we're doing this, and um, there's so many dogs, and there's actually, like, actually too many dogs and none of people in this house, which is really strange. Um, now, let's get into this, what we do every single week as we try to calm these dogs down, and this is where we're going to read through the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. And for those who do not know what the laws, statutes, and commandments are, these are these um, almost a taboo style thing of this world that, that people have made them taboo, that we, we don't have to do them or they don't apply to us or they're just they're, they're old school and they, they, they we're in the modern day and they, they just can't apply to us. And we believe that they completely apply to us in every way, shape, and form. In, in fact, they apply to us so much that they will actually be a little rudder that you can guide your entire life with. It can be that little tiny rudder on the back of your ship that if you have the Torah, then you guys are able to navigate these wild oceans that we are in right now and, you know, the oceans that we call the world. So as we go through these, which we do every single Shabbat, these are what a lot of people have tossed in, in, the, in the trash. And the very first commandment is be fruitful. And so when you see a commandment such as be fruitful and you want to put that on the cross or not apply it to your life, then by default, you would be not fruitful. And so if you want to just be a slug and not being, you know, producing, producing in our world that our creator has allowed us to walk into, um, that's what you would be, is not fruitful. Okay, so here we go, gentlemen. Is Number everyone ready? Two, multiply. Replenish oh, the... Oh, hold on real quick. Mr. Cole had something. Just wanted to say hi to Brother Glenn and oh. Richard B. Hey, Richard B. and Brother Glenn are in here. Okay, so we will start again. We, we had a false start. All right, everyone. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Aim, fire. All right, be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. To do it. Have you been over the fish, fowl, and every living creature? The herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. That's your sin. Every cling moving thing that lives shall be food for you. You gotta eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahoo's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. Fifty three times, over fifty three times we are told of this. And you guys are gonna be hearing these little odd dogs and there's they're making a lot of noises today, so we apologize. Right out of the gate. Okay, every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the feast of unleavened bread, Matzah. There's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ebrim. So you touch on that real quick, all of you guys, real quick. There's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ebrim. Let's, let's that means touch. the native people of Yashrael who got the commands and the people who came outside of the lands, if they wanted to come to Yashrael, they all had to fall under the same laws. They all fall under the same Torah. It doesn't mean it matters to the matter if you're right. From America or you're from Europe, you still have to follow the same commands if you want to be part of Yahuwah's children. Yeah, and, and so that means that it doesn't matter if you considered yourself a Gentile all your life. 
you don't want to be a Gentile. We don't want to be labeled a Gentile. What it means to be a Gentile is that it means that these laws, statutes, and commands that we're reading right now don't apply to your life. That would make you a Gentile. That would put you out of covenant with our creator. When you are in covenant with our creator, that means you keep these laws that we're reading right here. And so it doesn't matter where you're at, race, creed, color, doesn't matter. There's one set of laws that guy, that will govern our lives. It, it doesn't matter. All languages are all the same. It's, it's the same. Okay, 18. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to not. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. Do not kill. I'm getting delayed here. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not cover anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall store it five times. Yeah, who is laws for criminals? Do not lie with a beast. No sacrifice to other gods. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your, your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a of evil. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land a rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feasts of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends you for you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make her use anointing oil on a person. Do not make her use this perfume on a person. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbor's. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's Obey. time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not cover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie for the woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field, and you shall not glean your own vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your words to the day's wage there, do. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Hey, what do you guys think that means? How, we People love themselves a lot, right? People, the, the a man's skin is what a man's skin is, right? That, that's what they say, right? And, and so... A lot of times, when you're, if you love your neighbor as yourself, what does that look like? Do you I think, think? You, would, you do exactly for your neighbor what you do for yourself. Yeah, you would take care of them as you took care of your own skin, and a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people hate their neighbors, regardless, and um, that's a commandment. As we're told to love our neighbors. Okay, do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not ride your beard to the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nations. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, Omer count. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Tarah. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at Richard's comment on that. Sorry, I, I got I got off of that. Uh, that, was, that was interesting. Okay, continue on. Keep guys. the feast of Sukkot, Shemni Asaret. If you blast in the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your, confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazir. Where is Yitzit on the four corners of your garments? The laws of, of whoever touches the corpse. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. The Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Do not add or take away from the word. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the frontlets between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all the Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You, you shall sh give to a stranger of clean food that dies of itself, but not. But you shall not eat of it. You tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not shut. Do not harden your heart nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year, all males shall appear before Yahuwah. 
You should make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant Asherah poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken to the prophet who has chosen. There's a prophet test of Deuteronomy. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. First child is the adult portion. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies or eggs, take the babies but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that they will be lived on, you must play railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. Law of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired and needy a hired servant that is needy, poor needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Scope. All right, and that is that. All right, um, Mr. Colt, anything going on in there? It uh, looks like you have a matzah recipe coming up yep. from the grand. Yep, and I'll post that on the community post. She sends that over. Okay. That sounds good. And we have Lisa. Hi, she Lisa. Hi, Lisa. I thought some. I saw somebody else. I thought. Um, yeah. Lisa. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> brother, brother, again. I think he's gonna get kicked off the channel. Hey, it's okay, brother Glenn. You, you'll never. You, you have an honorary spot forever. You'll never get kicked off. All right. Now let us get into this, guys. And so, what we are reading today is we are reading in Genesis twenty-eight. And so, the bottom for those who who have never read with us at all. The bottom is a version um, that is called the Hallelujah Scriptures. It used to be called the Hallelujah Scriptures. Now it's called Yahoo Scriptures, and it's available absolutely free. And there's always links on all of our channels, and um, you will see everything um, that you would like to see. You can download. It's absolutely free of charge. Now, the top version is a version that, Eli, I think you just oh, gave no. us an ad. Did you just give us an ad? What did you do? I tried to get rid of the blue thing. All right. Well, you just, uh, you just took us to school, son. All right. Hold on. I think you might have given us an ad as well. And um, we're having technical difficulties. I got the little guy here, and he's completely... It just died. <laughs> it did just die that. Okay, all right. So we are going to get the Targums in here, and so we are going to go right here. And we've had... This is the second time we've had technical difficulties in the last... I don't know what to say about this, other than we have technical difficulties. Okay, here we go. Let's try this again, second time. Eli, will you please stop clicking things? Yep. I would appreciate that. Okay. All right, here we go. So the top part, again, is the Targums. And the Targums is a copy of, of scriptures that is just another flavor of scriptures, except what we have learned and what we are learning is this thing has a ton of Jewish legends. Now, we actually, there's literally a site called the Legends of the Jews. And we some of the stuff that we were trying to figure out from last week, Eli found out, where'd you find it at? Uh, some website was like trying to figure out like uh, some of the stuff that we read, and it's like uh, the le it says in the legends of the Jews. Yeah, and and so that's what we want to make sure is we're not um, clogging up people's minds with anything. And so when we have scriptures, the scriptures that we always stick to are the scriptures that we know and that we have been proven and everything of the sort. When we read these extracurricular texts at the top. Again, we need to spit out the bones, chew in the meat, and get some extra stuff. And there has been some good stuff that we have learned that has turned out exactly right. But there's some other stuff, like um, they say that King Og was, was doing the rodeo on the Noah's Ark. Like he had a little place and he was up there um, beating the waves with the, with the rain or something. You know, and it's just crazy things that just doesn't, why would, and why would our creator ever keep a, a, a Nephilim around or something of the sort? So anyway, this is what we're getting into, guys. Let us begin Genesis 28. Sylvia's here. She's Hi, Sylvia. Sick. She's sick, though. She's uh -oh. in bed. All right. Hey, Sylvia. How's your sister? Hope you're doing good. Much love to you, dear sis. I hope we can make it while you have some power. Okay, let's get, let's get going, guys. Uh, Genesis 28, verse 1. And Yitzhak called Yaakov and Barak him and commanded him and said to him, Do not take a wife from the daughters of Kenan. Arise, go to Padam Aram, to the house of Bethuel your mother's father, and take a wife for yourself from there, from the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. Three, and El Shaddai barak you, and make you bear fruit, and increase you, 
and you shall become an assembly of peoples and give you the Baraka of Abraham to you and your seed with you so that you inherit the land of your sojournings, which Elohim gave to Abraham. All right, so let's talk about that real quick, right? Um, for those who do not know what Barak means, what is, what is Barak? Uh, blessed. 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 And if you have a Baraka, it's a blessing. It's a blessing, right? And so may the El Shaddai is blessing. Why does um, why doesn't he want him take a wife from the daughters of Kena Kenaan? Because they are like a corrupted generation. They are a generation that worships idols. They're a generation that does adultery. They're not a holy generation. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's continue on. Eli, do I need to go to the terms? Yet? I should have you read the first verse. Okay. Five at the bottom. So Yitchak sent to Yaakov away. So Yitchak sent Yaakov away, and he went to Padam Aram to Laban, son of Bethuel, the Armenian, the brother of Ribka, the mother of Yaakov, and Esau. Okay, so now he's in the hands of um, Laban, dirty Laban, right? Um, as far as Laban goes, he is uh, he's a bad dude. He's a real bad dude. Okay, so here we are. We're heading back up to the Targums, and this is where it begins. Five miracles were wrought for our father Jacob at the time that he went forth from Beersheba. The first sign, the hours of the day were shortened, and the sun went down before his time. Forasmuch as the word had desired to speak with him, Okay, so this is way different, right? So you get into this chapter and all of a sudden you end up with all sorts of stuff. What do you guys make of that, the first sign? The hours of the day were shortened um, and the sun went down before his time. What do you guys make of this? Maybe, maybe, that, maybe that happened. Well, it's just maybe, you know yeah. that mm -hmm. Joshua was able to make the sun stand longer. Right. So, I mean, it is possible. Okay, the second sign. The four stones which Jacob had set for his pillow, he found in the morning, had become one stone. Okay, so... That's yeah. possible too. Are we are we back to the the legends of the Jews? I mean, I don't really see anything wrong. That doesn't like really, like contradict him. I mean, if it can become one stone, that's cool. It doesn't change anything much. Really. Right, and I guess that's something that I should specify is is when we're talking about things like this, none of this stuff has anything to do with salvation. These are simply adjectives. They're they're confirming words. They're they are explaining things out of here. Salvation begins at least with Revelation 14, 12, that we need to keep the commandments of our, our Elohim and the faith of Messiah Yahushua. So when we're talking about things like this, none of this stuff is, is salvation based. It's, it's a lot of it is speculation. A lot of it is we're just we're trying to figure out what the legends of the Jews are versus what real scriptures are. OK, sign the third. What do you got, Mystical? Drake says Genesis 28, 1 says Israel was not to intermingle with the Canaanites. Then in Genesis 28, 3, Jacob's offspring would not be multitude of races, but of tribes, nations, separate seeds. Separate seeds, yeah, keeping everybody separate. Okay, five. So Yitzhak, okay, well, actually, where are we at here, Eli? Uh, you, uh, you, uh, you're on sign third. Okay, the third. So this is the third. We haven't even made it past, like, verse one on this thing yet in the Targums. So sign of the third, the stone which, when all the flocks were assembled, they rolled from the mouth of the well. He rolled away with one of his arms. Now, in scriptures, we've never, ever heard anything of this, but we do know that he went and he rolled the stone away. Rolled the stone away. So now is there's other things that we have never heard before. Okay. Um, the fourth sign, the well overflowed and the water rose to the edge of it and continued to overflow all the days that he was in Haran. Now, um, this was new to us, and we actually skimmed through some of this last week because it was starting to get a little odd with the, 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 the Jewish legend stuff that they had in there. And so um, this is very interesting. So the well they're talking about is Laban's well. And when um, Jacob went there, and when the very first time that supposedly he went there, uh, the well started overflowing. And that's something that I've never seen. I mean, we, we have wells, but they don't overflow. Like when you have water overflowing out of that, that means you would hit like some sort of a, a water thing or something that would pop it up as most wells wouldn't overflow like that unless you hit like some sort of a like an aquifer or something okay let's see the fifth, the fifth sign the country was shortened before him so that in one day he went forth and came to Haran okay things we've never ever heard in our lives ever okay let's continue on and he prayed in the place of the house of the sanctuary and lodged there because the sun had gone down and he took four stones of the holy place and he set his pillow and slept in that place and he dreamed and behold a ladder was fixed in the ground and on the top of it reached to the height of heaven and behold the two messengers who went unto Sodom 
and who had been expelled from the midst of them because they had revealed the secrets of Yahuwah of the world. And being cast forth, they had walked till the time that Jacob went out from the house of his father and had accompanied him with kindness unto Bethel in that day had ascended to the high heavens and said, Come, see Jacob the pious, whose likeness is inlaid in the throne of glory and whom you have so greatly desired. Then the rest of the messengers of the Holy Lord descended to look upon. Okay, the Jerusalem has a bunch of stuff right here. What do you guys make of red? It sounds like the messengers that like were in Son of Gomorrah, like wiped out Son of Gomorrah, got kicked out. So but we we know that. Remember from the Tartans, we learned that one messenger, one messenger was there to destroy them. One messenger was there for something else. Oh, is it? So, I think so. And so and one, there one, was another one they had that was there to just talk with Abraham. Right. Okay, and so what do you guys, anything, anyone have anything, speculation on this? Um, it's not like they got kicked out, but like they come back, like they were, you said they were expelled. What's, yeah, no, this is, this is, this is odd. This is very odd stuff. They, they went right back, they went right up to heaven, and they basically were like, hey, look, the there Jesus. he is. So I don't know, they were, they got expelled, but I guess they're right back. All right, let's but. do the Jerusalem real quick on this, and then we'll get into the scriptures at the bottom. Five signs were wrought for our father Jacob, the time he went forth from Beersheba to go into Haran. The first sign, the hours of the day were shortened for him, and the sun was hidden from him before its time, because his word had desired to speak with him. The second sign, after our father Jacob had lifted, had lifted up his feet by Beersheba, the country was shortened before him, and he found himself sitting in Haran. That's very interesting. We, we've never quite heard it like this. The third sign, the stones which Jacob our father had taken in the evening and set as the, at the, rest, as the resting place of his head, when he had arisen in the morning, he found had all become one stone, and that is the stone which he set up in the first covenant, pouring oil upon the top of it. The fourth sign, when all the shepherds had gathered together at the stone to roll it from the mouth of the well and could not, then came our father Jacob and lifted it with one hand and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. The fifth sign, after our father Jacob had lifted the stone from the mouth of the well, the well overflowed, and that overflowing 20 years, all the day that our father Jacob dwelt in Haran. These five signs were wrought for our father Jacob in the time when he departed from Beersheba to go to Quran. All right, what do you guys think? You, you think um, think all this happened? I mean, it's possible. I, I mean, it, 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 it wouldn't change much for us. It wouldn't change. I don't think it'd change anything. But I mean, if he got there faster, he his four rocks came one, oil overflowed. I mean, we know from the book of Jasher that the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and and all of them, they're very strong, right? Um, Yitzhak's sons. Are um, they ended up strong, and so he was strong. Like everybody in that family has some sort of like a, a supernatural strength, and so I, I guess it's very interesting about the whole rock over the top of it. All right, here we go. Five in the Holy Scriptures or the ex Holy Scriptures. So Yitzhak sent Jacob away, and he went to Padam Aram to Laban, son of Bethuel the Armenian, the brother of Ribka, the mother of Jacob and Esau. And Esau saw that Yitzhak had Barak Jacob and sent him away to Padam Aram to take himself a wife from there, and that as he barak him, he gave him a command, saying, Do not take a wife from the daughters of Kinan, and that Jacob had obeyed his father and his mother and had gone to Padamaram. So Esau saw that the daughters of Kinan did not please his father Yitzhak, and Esau went to Yishmael and took Mahalak, the daughter of Yishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Neboeth, to be his wife besides the wives he had. Okay, what is this... Tell you guys, so um, he, I, Esau's a rebel. It's not like that's what it's, that's what it says. Esau's a rebel. Yeah, but then he like he like saw that it made him angry, so he went and grabbed another wife from somewhere else. Well, Yish Yishmel's his uncle. Yeah, his his and so Yishmel's um, the sister of Naboth to his wife. Yeah, so um, he was being a rebel, right? He he saw that his dad did not want him to do that, so he went out there and took them took a girl from that just to uh, do be a, a rebel. Okay, and Yaakov went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. And he came upon a place and stopped for the night, for the sun was down. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. Did we just skip like a whole bunch of stuff at the top? I think it did. Okay, so we missed, we actually missed this. So here's the story of this in these scriptures. And he dreamed and saw a ladder standing on the earth. And his top reached to the Shemaim and saw messengers of Elohim going up and coming down on it. And see... Yahuwah stood above it and said, I am Yahuwah, Elohim of Avram, your father, and the Elohim of Yitzhak, 
The land of which you are lying, I give it to you in your seed. And your seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall break forth to the west and to the east, to the north and the south. And all the clans of the earth shall be Baruch in you and in your seed. And see, I am with you and shall guard you wherever you go and shall bring you back to this land. For I am not going to leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. And Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, truly, Yahuwah is in this place and I did not know it. So right here on this verse would be essentially when he woke up between verse 15 and 16, his pillow, if the Targums is correct, turned into one large rock. Into four little rocks, and they became one rock. Yeah, and so it's still uh, not quite a nice pillow, but I mean, it's it, that that's truly something different. Now, why do you guys think that you would sleep on four rocks? What, what do you guys have? You guys have never slept outside, have you? Uh, like that? Not like that, no. Yeah, so I, I tell you, from Boy Scouts and from like a lot of camping outside, it doesn't matter what you put your head on. It, it actually it does, but you will try the softest thing you can have. And even if it's a rock, a flat rock, and you can get your head a little bit lifted up, you can use that as a pillow. Okay, you have anything? Drag says the stone, the pillar is very is the very stone that was carried by the Israelites wherever they dwelt. The stone of destiny. Hmm, I didn't know that. And then Carla says Esau was deliberate with his actions. Yeah, yeah, e Esau is a complete rebel. There's a reason he didn't end up with the blessings. Well, yeah, and he's just he's just not he's a bad dude. Okay, um, where are we at, Eli? Uh, you are on I think seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, seventeen. And he was afraid. And said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of Elohim, and this is the gate of the Shimaim. All right, now a lot of people, there's a lot of speculation on Jacob's ladder. And like it, a lot of people say it's a portal. A lot of, a lot of there's a, just a tremendous amount of speculation on what exactly he saw. Is, do you believe this was a gate of heaven or, or is he seeing something? I mean, what, he's, what it, it talks about is a ladder in the ground. And it's planted and going up and down. It's, it's essentially a, a ladder to heaven. I mean, they've, they've made songs about this, literally. Thoughts? Anyone? Um, I guess, yeah, this is where he saw angels. I mean, we don't know exactly what he saw, but it's something going up to heaven. Yeah, well, he says it's the gate of the Shimaim, and so wherever that is at exactly. Do um, you think people can go up to heaven that way? Or that I don't know. Spiritual I, I, it's all spiritual. I mean, everybody's tried to get up to heaven one way or another, and they end up losing their languages. Okay. Okay, now we're back at the top. Eighteen down here. All right. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was fixed on the earth, and the summit of it reached to the height of heaven. And behold, the messengers who had accompanied him from the house of his father ascended to make known to the messengers on high, saying, Come see Jacob the pious, whose likeness is in the throne of glory, and whom you have been desirous to see. And behold, the holy messengers from before Yahuwah ascended and descended and looked upon him. Now I wonder why it says Jacob the pious. Um, is pious like a, like a boastful thing? Yeah, I thought pious, being pious wasn't a good thing. Um, I don't know. Um, Grand, Brother Glenn, you got anything on, on pious? Um, maybe uh, you know, nobody else has internet here. We'd look it up. Okay, let's continue on. Maybe we figure out what pious is or why they would say that. And behold, the glory of Yahuwah righteous. stood... Righteous. Pious is righteous? All right, thank you. Was that Brother Glenn? No, that's Graham. Ah, Graham. All right, thank you, guys. Thanks, Graham. And behold, the glory of Yahuwah stood above him, and he said to him, I am Yahuwah, the Elohim of Abraham thy father, and the Elohim of Isaac. The land on which thou art lying I will give to thee and to thy sons. And thy sons shall be many as the dust of the earth, and shall become strong on the west and on the east, on the north and on the south. And all the kindreds of the earth shall through thy righteousness and the righteousness of thy sons be blessed. And behold, my word is for thy help and will keep thee in every place where thou shalt go and will bring thee again to this land. For I will not leave thee until the time when I have performed all that I have told thee. All right, the point that pops out on that right there to me is it says, and behold, my word is for thy help. And this is what, this is what I, I, I tell people all the time is that when we are in the word of our creator, the word of our creator is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. When we are in the word, it by default helps us. It will help us guide our path and guide this life that we have. Without it, it will not be any help to us. In fact, it will be a detriment. In fact, we will find curses without the word of our creator. If we are, in, in fact, we won't find curses without it. We'll find curses without obeying it. And so um, I find that very fascinating. My word is for thy help. 
And I believe that the word of our creator is for help all through our life. And without the Torah, we would simply be lost. We would be lost, lost, lost. And we, we can't thank our creator enough for the word that he did leave us for help. Okay, let's continue on. And, and, and Jacob. Okay, and Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Verily the glory of Yahuwah's Shekinah dwelleth in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful and glorious is this place. This place is not common, but the sanctuary of the name of Yahuwah, the proper spot for prayer, set forth before the gate of heaven and founded beneath the throne of glory. Okay? Bottom yeah. part? Yep. All right. Now we're back 18 at the bottom. And Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, put it up as a standing column and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Beth El. However, the name of that city has been Luz previously. All right, so in 18, it says the, the stone that he had put for his pillow. It said pillows. There's multiple, but it's the one stone, so it could be either. What are you reading out? A sefer. Oh, you're reading out a sefer? So what does it say in sefer? It says, And Yaakov arose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows. Oh. So it, it's... Oh, his head. Yeah, put his head, put his pillows. Yeah, so... But it says stone, it says right? stone, but it says pillows. It's right. plural. So it says plural in yours? Yeah. Pi Stones? Pi no, stone, and then pillows is plural. Pillows, right. Okay. So it, it came from stones to stone, I think, is, is if the uh, Targums is correct. Okay. Uh, Eli, we're at... 20. 20. And Jacob made a vow saying, Seeing Elohim is with me and has kept me in this way that I am going and has given me bread to eat and a garment to put on when I have returned to my father's house in peace and Yahuwah shall be my Elohim. Then this stone, which I have placed as a standing column, shall be Elohim's house. And of all that you give me, I shall certainly give a tenth to you. All right, so here's the first tithing that, well, not the first tithing. Here's, here is a, a tithing statement that he said he's going to basically give everything that he has, a tenth of it, to him. Now, how do you guys think, because we don't have a set of, we don't have Levites back then, we don't have any of this. How would tithing look? Well, he might sacrifice himself. He might do this. Right, right. But what about a giving a tithing, a tenth? If he's given a tenth of everything he has, I don't know if a tenth would be all animal sacrifices or would there be monetary value to this? Well, we know Shem was a high priest. Abraham gave a portion of Shem. We know that Shem's son, later we hear in Jack, he basically takes the place of, of Shem. Mm -hmm. Now, I see a lot of these, in fact, I see most every, if you watch YouTube and you look at these preachers, they, they there's a common theme with every preacher with every kind of most of every youtube channel is there's donations and there's tithe buttons right and they will sit there and they're like well you know you should tithe and i've heard it all my life that everybody oh yeah you need to give 10 percent of everything that you have to the church is this biblical or is this not biblical it's not biblical why because we're supposed to give our portions to the levites and they aren't levites they are people of their pulpit leading us astray so, you, so if I go to a church on a Sunday and I write, if I have $100 to my name and I give 10%, I give $10 to the church, is this obeying our creator? No. Why? Because uh, you're, on Sunday, you're going to church on Sunday. Why are you going to church on Sunday? You Who is tithing time? supposed to go to? It's supposed to go to the Levites. And, and how can we tithe? We can give, we, we help the poor, we help the needy, we help the followers, yeah, the widows. absolutely. And the guy, Doing, the guy up in the pulpit doesn't need the money. Being a preacher is... He might need the money. He might need the money, but... A shame that we have to go on a Sunday when we should be teaching everywhere else. We, everyone should be teaching the, the Bible every single day of the week, not just on a Sunday, having one person teach it to us because they're the only ones willing to do it. Yeah, and that's the, what I find extremely fascinating about the a 501c3 church is that you get a guy and he will preach on only Paul. He'll preach a little bit on the New Testament. You get one hour on a Sunday. They come and write him a whole bunch of checks, and um, that's it. And then people will go after that and they will go to a restaurant where they will pay their employee or pay people. They will just continue on paying. And, you know, we have a set of commandments that on a Shabbat, we're not to buy or sell. We're not to work. We're not to make other people work. Anything like that. And so if you're involved in giving your money to a 501c3, it's essentially going into the pits of hell. It doesn't matter where it's going. It's going to the world, and it's not going to be serving our creator where it needs to be. And so it, it's uh, one of those things that, you know, the whole tithing thing is, is such a scam. All right. I have to go back to Pius. Pius. 
What do we got? The grand say is devout, godly, holy, devoted to the service of El, proceeding from piety. Okay, so he was a hero. He was a legend to these uh, messengers that were there. Okay, do and we brother, have more on this? Yeah. Brother Glenn says yeah. it's definitely okay. not biblical on the tithing because it's not in the Bible. Yeah. And then Richard B. says they twist the tithe to, ben for, to their benefit. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so we're going to finish up here on the top in the Targums. And Jacob arose in the morning and took the stone which he had placed for his pillow and set it standing and poured oil on the top of it. And he called the name of that place Beth, Beth El. But Luz was the name of the city at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if the word of Yahuwah will be my helper and he will keep me from shedding innocent blood and from strange worship and from impure con converse in this way that I am going and will give me bread to eat and raiment to wear and will bring me back in, in peace to my father's house. Yahuwah shall be my Elohim, and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be ordained for the house of the sanctuary of Yahuwah, and upon it shall generations worship the name of Yahuwah. And of all that thou mayest give me, the tenth t will I separate before thee. Now let's go up and look at this, because this is an amazing statement right here that he's talking about. He's asking our creator. He made a vow. In the vow, he says, if the word of Yahuwah will be my helper, and then he says, Keep me from shedding innocent blood. Stay away from strange worship, from impure converse. What do you guys think? He says right there, impure converse. He he obviously is watching his mouth and watching the way he talks, right? I think it comes from like watching his brother. I think his brother was all those things that like the strange worship, shedding of innocent blood. I think his brother was like that and he wants nothing to be of that. Yeah, no, this is an amazing thing. If, if we are to be like our creator's people, then these are the same things we will want to do, right? Yah, if you will, if you will give us your word, we will keep from shedding innocent blood. We will stay away from strange worship. We will stay away from impure converse. Now, impure converse, I mean, that can be as hanging out in the gym, in the boys' club, right? I mean, sitting here, nasty jokes, evil speak, things that are not um, of what our Creator would would want to to. To, for us to be saying and I always tell my boys that whenever they're speaking like that um, you have to understand that our creator and his son and all the messengers are reporting back absolutely every kind of evil speak and things that come out of our mouth and it will be replayed to us while we're standing there naked before our creator and so we need to be very careful on how we do this and I find it very fascinating that Jacob you know he wants he wants to stay away from shedding innocent blood away from strange worship now strange worship you know, going back to the, the Sunday 501c3 church, that is strange worship. We've never been told to go on a first day, um, drive to a church and, and go into a, you know, nine o'clock or 10 o'clock Sunday school. Then 11 o'clock you have church. And I did it all my entire life. And there is absolutely nothing biblical that was that told us to do any of this stuff. And so I guess we want to take lessons from our, our forefathers and the people that made it and the people that, you know, these are literally our forefathers. And if they had not done this right, we probably wouldn't be talking about them today in this kind of a level. All right. Um, I think that's it. Anyone else have anything out there? Anyone in the chat room have anything? Mr. Cole? Um, I don't think so. I'm trying to post the grams. Matzo recipe? Yeah, but it, it's a little big, so I'm just okay. going in sections here. All right. Well, <laughs> we are going to, I guess, wrap this up. Um, if any of you guys have any kind of, uh, oh, Jade does have an ironic blessing. Yes. Um, right. Hold on. Not quite yet. If any of you guys have any kind of prayer requests or anything that we can um, lift up your guys' names or things to our creator, we are happy to do that. Either email us, uh, post a comment. We, we, we pray as much as we possibly can on this. And we would love to add you in there. Um, please also pray for us in everything. We are always under attack. We are always under affliction. And every single Shabbat is another blessing that our Creator can hold the fort and keep us going and keep us going right here. And so all glory is, is to our Creator. We love Him with every last breath of our being. And we can't thank Him enough. And we can't thank you guys enough for being here with us, spending a little time with His Ecclesia. And, um, yeah, Jade, will you uh, finish us off here with a... Uh, Blessing. Yep. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto Elaron and unto his sons, saying, On this why you shall bless the children of Yashrael, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Yashrael, and I will bless them. Beautiful. Yeah, and you'll, he will put our name upon the people of Yashrael, and that's what we want. We want to be... We want to be accepted by our Creator and His Son, and there's that's the that's the goal, and that's where we want to be. And the only way to do that is by keeping the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. 
Okay, we're gonna end this with little James and hold on before you do that. Hold on, not in it yet. <laughs> Miss Nicole said no. Jeannie, not of the world, has a question. Hi, Jeannie. She says, "Is it okay to have a picture of Yehoshua with the Lord's Prayer on it, or is it a graven image?" Um, that's that's a very that's a very interesting thing. Um, yeah, I, I I guess number one is I don't have an exact answer for this. What I have always talked to people and what I've come to the understanding of things like crosses. Um, we are told not to have a graven image of anything in the likeness of our our creator um brother maybe brother glenn and the grand maybe have something on this i've come personally and i i don't think it's wise to wear crosses um things of that nature all of these kind of things you know if they killed our messiah in an electric chair and you start wearing an electric chair around your neck i i don't think it would be the same thing i think we've taken this and um it, it was actually a stake versus a, a a kind of a cross that they have told us all about um, the Grand, you guys have anything on this? Um, it's an idol, is what Brother Glenn says. Brother Glenn says it's an idol? Yep. So probably the best thing to do is, is have that Lord's Prayer without a picture of, you know, what it is. Because we, we are told not to do what the, the pagans do. So, um, Brother Glenn, thank you very, very much. Um, is there, I, hopefully that answers that a, a little bit out there. Jeannie, is that, is that good? Sis, hopefully that's good. Um... Anyone else? Chat room? Um, I would say personally don't have anything because you don't know what it looks like. You made something of somebody you don't know. So. Yeah, it's an image. Yeah, you don't. He says, okay, I'll take it down. Thank you. Okay. Much love, Jeannie. Much love to everybody out there. We love you guys very, very much, truly. And um, thank you guys. We're going to do some uh, Rin the Heavens.
right, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. We love you. Um, so Nazarene follower bears on throws in there. What do I think of the banks collapsing? I can't wait for the banks to collapse. I can't wait for the kingdom to come. I can't wait for all this worldly stuff to be gone. And uh, that's it. So much love to everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Hope all you guys right. have a wonderful day. Shalom. 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 Shalom.